Hello, my name is Surya Remy, and today I'm bringing you a game of Planetary Annihilation. I'm playing in Alpha Build 49455. Um, there has been a little thing in this patch where Tech 2 Air has been disabled um, due to a bug, but we can get around that too. Don't want to look at that view just yet. So the new match um, generation is in, which is great. And so this is a new map that I haven't seen before. And I can't zoom me out because I think that's a bit too sensitive, but it's got to be careful with the scroll wheel. I think we'll start here. Each player gets a random set of starting areas they can pick from. And you have to pick somewhere within these green circles. I've picked here because it's a very large open bit of land. Uh, this game, I'm going to be trying to show off vehicles. Um, through all my games, I'm going to be picking a theme that I'm going to go across, whether it's building vehicles, or building bots, or air, or artillery, or fire bases, and stuff like that. And I say this one's going to be vehicles. Uh, part of the reason for that is that they are still doing balancing, and the bots are a little underpowered, and as I said earlier, air is, um, tech to air doesn't work at the minute, so vehicles seem the smart option to do. I'd like to open up with two mass and energy. This has it used to be fine, but it has changed slightly. Now I'm running out of energy, so I might go mass energy mass in the future. The commander builds at a pretty decent rate, um, and he takes only 1500 energy, which is great. While we're waiting, um, I did a little testing with engineering <laughs> fabricator. Um, boosting. Can't want to call them energies like subcom, but I'm a bit mad, so let's ignore that. And for, from what I found, energy boosting is very effective up to about four engineers, and it gets severe diminishing returns. Um, adding one engineer to these things nearly halves the time, which is fantastic. So doing that is well worth it, even though it costs a little bit more energy than having a second factory. But energy is fairly easy to get, so I'm not that uh, bothered about that. I just like to have con be constantly building energy so I can be building build capacity all the time. For now, I think, though, I will be getting some more metal. Oh, this is uh, another slight bug in the current build. If you start shift queuing before you leaves a ramp, you can start building one on the ramp of the factory. I think it might be something to do with like being in air or something. But it, we'll only do it for the first building. And it's not it's not that big a problem really. Only problem would be is if this guy can't now get off, but he should be able to. Um, going for the, um, the advanced vehicle factories quite quickly seems to be quite a good strategy, because getting tech 2 is Vital and things. Oh wow, he is still going at bloody distance with that, isn't he? Yes, the tech, the tech two stuff is very good, especially tech two radar. Um, there are a couple of other bugs in the current build. I'll see if we can find one. Oh, I wish it would stop doing that on your scroll wheel. Here's one. You can see the enemy places bases by the footprint of the buildings. Oh, those those two are quite close to each other. Don't look like I'm near anyone though, so let's just go for economy, shall we? Lots and lots and lots of econ. Alright, come here. Go assist the commander. Like I say, assisting in this game is fairly good. Oh wow, you actually made the second one from over there as well. Press N to rotate the camera to the line to poles. Seems to still have a slight bug where it will I don't think this is that. I don't know whether this is a bug or whether it's always trying to align north to south based on the rotation of the planet. Um, but it can be sometimes very hard to actually align it to the direction you want it to go. Right, so let's just in case some people make some tech on air. Let's build a few anti-air bots or vehicles. People wondering whether the chat's working. Huh. So. Like I said, my general strategy is going to be going for Tech 2 vehicles. Um, they are very, very strong at the moment, the current build. The original stompers from the bots have been um, actually removed from the game, the ones that were really overpowered. So, it's hardly surprising. We're um, only going off that way, unfortunately, but oh well. 
getting plenty, plenty of energy so I can get my build capacity up in the near future. And lots more econ. Now, the the way that the resource system works in this game is you have energy, which is used um, every building and builder uses energy to do its stuff. So it will always use the same amount of energy regardless of what it's doing. So whether this is whether the commander is building his thing or assisting a tech two bot or whether he's assisting a tech one bot or assisting a factory, doesn't matter. He will always use fifteen hundred energy, which is quite cool because it means it. Um, you can immediately know exactly how much energy you need to sustain your current level of build capacity. Um, now metal, on the other hand, works more traditionally like each thing costs metal. Um, they have a an amount they can stream metal by, but I'm pretty sure it um, changes when you assist other thing, things, uh, how much metal it uses. So, it metal is going to be the one that's going to be very hard to work out generally how much you need, how much you should build, where you need it, when you need it, and how you need it. Um, but energy is literally just going to be constantly build. One one of these things will do about two thirds of a um, fabrication vehicle. Um, nearly an entire bot and about half a plane I believe. Uh, I've put stats out there somewhere. Um, I'll link you to my uh, Hearthstone spreadsheet in the description, which I'll be updating as often as I possibly can. It, it is quite time consuming though know, to test it, as you do have to test it. But the way I test it is I make 10 engineers with each building, um, assisted by different amounts of engineers to test build speeds, and then I just test with the engineers how much energy they use for each lot. Um, so that, that takes about 7-8 minutes per building. There's, Eight buildings, and then, <laughs> and then you've also got um, six different engineers and the commander. So, oh, and naval. So, eight different engineers and the commander. Oh, nine because you've got the advanced sub as well. So, it does take quite a while to test these things, but I will be trying to do it at least once a fortnight, if not more often than that. This is nearly done. So, let's switch over this to make it more build capacity. I think. And let's spread our anti-air out a little. Now, these anti-air units are very good early game. They, they can help against scouting, against general... Um, just uh, planes, like trying to do early bomber rushes or something like that. Which I haven't really seen many people doing. But that is something that I think will become very prevalent, just like it did in Command and Conquer... God. Supreme Commander at the start. Okay. Tech 2 factory is done. I still like to make Tech 1 factories though. Um, but once the Tech 2 guy is out and I've already got my radar up, which is the first thing I build, I will then be making Tech 2 energy. And I think my metal's a bit low as well, so I'll be building more metal and assisting it with the commander and this build capacity I have acquired throughout the course of the game so far. Come here, Mr. Tech 2 Engineer. You can build that. In fact, you are going to be my scout. Now, I've mentioned in previous videos how I like to scout. Um, this seems to be quite an effective way of scouting, which is placing Tech 2 radars randomly, essentially. Um, it affords you great battlefield vision. Um, you just got to be careful to, to try and skim the outskirts. When this bug doesn't happen. I will be scouting early with um, some units um, to start off with to try and get a feel for where the enemy buildings are and whatnot, so I know what to avoid when I'm building my um, radars down when I'm putting them all about. Have I got my second? Yes, I have got my second Tech 2 bot. Come here, Mr. Tech 2 bot. And let's build some more energy, because this is the thing that's going to kill me in a second, as you will see. See, my energy is going to drop drastically when all these start helping with this now. Oh, wow, okay, I'm, I'm actually about breaking even. So I can quite happily 
move on to making some Tech 2 metal. Now I'm sure that there's some people out there going, oh my god, why aren't you building more build capacity for units? Why aren't you building um, more advanced tech? Why aren't you building Tech 2 artillery? And so on and so forth. Now the reason for that is simple. I just don't fancy making it right now. And I think I'm safe enough that I don't have to worry about it either. So I'm just going to stick with making um, Econ for the minute. And then I'll root myself into a more defensive posture and start work on more um, production facilities. Actually, I'm going to start you guy because you are not doing anything anyway because I've built one too many on some more advanced vehicle factories. Trying to ex expand away from my opponents and put them in a way that they're not just going to all get stuck. Okay, so you guys come here and help improve that. The pathing on assisting does seem a little weird because they seem to have a reduced range or maybe just um, the range for that is bugged. Either way, it is a little annoying. Where are you guys going? Come here. Let's build some static air defence even though don't have to worry about Tech 2 bombers in the current patch, but it's worth doing just so I don't forget it in the future. And another bug, for some reason it stops you. Sh oh no, it's because I've selected a different building. If you hold down Shift, it still lets you select stuff for some reason. That's something that will be fixed eventually, I I I'd hope, <laughs> at the very least. Um, where's my Tech 2 bot gone? No, 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 no. Where's he gone? Oh, he's up there, isn't he? Oh, he's at the long range building bug thing. So, come back down here. Um, I need some space for energy. Over here will do lovely. I've got to be a little careful taking my commander out this far just to build energy. But, I'm not that worried. He's, he is tough and he does move quite quickly. Oh, system. <laughs> Currently, if you try and assist while having um, the thing building is um, selected, it tries to assist itself, so it cancels its build queue. Another small bug, but one that isn't that annoying, really. It's just, you just wish it didn't happen. So let's start work on some, let's start work on some mobile artillery. Mobile artillery is very good. It's got very good range, and you can. Um, Avoid enemy artillery shots very easily with it. So, as you can see with my scouting, I've already picked up the edges of this guy's base and this guy's base. This next one will hopefully give me all of Warauder's base. <laughs> got, got a lot of those Warauder's. Okay. Again, the paving, paving, pathing, whatever you want to call it, it's a little buggy with this assisting. So, just got to sometimes tease them into doing as they're told. Just, just help them along a little. Come on, you can help. There you go. Eventually, uh, more this build capacity that's currently building Econ, I'm going to switch over to building more factories, which is another reason I like building engineers for build capacity rather than just purely more factories, because it does make just generally switching very easy. You can go from tech to vehicles to tech to air without too much trouble, because Rather than have to build 20 tech 2 of each factory, you can build 5 of each factory and have 2 engineers boosting each one. So that's tech switching a lot. Um, well, it just allows it. I mean, trying to trying to build 20 factories wouldn't be viable. Now you could say, because there's no unit cap, you'd actually want to be building both at the same time. Which is perfectly valid. Um, and yes, you probably will want to be building both at the same time. But, um, in the early game, at the very least, you'll be wanting to, bloody hell, <laughs> you'll, you'll, 
you won't want to put that much investment in building that much production facilities that quickly. That much, that many. Okay, am I worried about this guy attacking me? Yeah, let's build, just in case, some very basic defense to try and scare him off a little. It doesn't really cost me much. I do badly need more metal, though. Once once this, this, all these have been built, these will be switching over to metal as well, actually, I think. Get more econ on the go. Let's build some more. Well, let's build some levelers from this one. Starting to get a decent sized army. Oh, okay. For some reason, these guys have just decided to stop building. Oh. So there's going to be a bit of a sea battle going on between these two. Oh, I'm not worried though. Okay. Um, I don't know if I've shown off Galactic View. Does have a slight bug in that all your stuff does actually go onto the sun at the minute. But it looks very pretty. You can see the orbits of the planets and whatnot around the things, which um, I'm sure will come into play massively in the game when you have multiple planets and you're trying to assault a planet. Of course, you want it to be closer, which is pretty cool. Uh, can I go back to... Thank you. I don't know how to move. Now I'm stuck. <laughs> there we go. I knew I'd be fine eventually. So, how's this going? Go in. Let's just finish off this one. I think this will be enough energy for now then. There's a Tech 2 guy. There he is. You can then come over here and make more metal. And then you'll just be f making metal forever, um, whether you have assistance or not, doesn't matter. I'll give you some assistance manually though. Let's get you to make some of those guys. Start to get a bit of an army going. So yeah, as you can see, with this Tech 2 radar, I've got very good vision of what's going on here. Uh, this all looks like static defense. Um, there's some naval yards going there. That's probably a ship making an advanced naval facility. You've got some um, bots likely assisting, I assume. Um, this guy looks quite turreted in, though, unless those are all metal making facilities, which is quite plausible. Quite plausible indeed. I think actually, I'm going to reposition these guys down here to better protect my econ. Although, it doesn't look like he's in any position to move out at the minute. Okay, so... The metal's starting to get up there. Unfortunately, making metal does take quite a bit of metal. So, there is that problem. I'm going to start now building some storage. Now, I d I'm not a huge fan of just making massive amounts of storage. But if you ever plan on doing large amounts of artillery or anything like that, it's very important to have the storage there. Metal storage, I think, is, is less needed, but can be very helpful if you're going to have big jumps in build capacity at some point. So I'm going to drop some of that now. You can also save, you know, say a saviour if someone does like a very sneaky attack, takes out a lot of your econ. Okay, so let's select these and have a little meander, shall we? See what we can see. Have I got spare tech two bot anyway? I don't think so. Do I? That's okay because if you control click on something, it will add it to the front of the build queue, which is very good. And now the reason I'm doing that is because I really want to get some radar coverage a bit closer if I'm going to do anything with this guy now, just to make sure um, that nothing's trying to sneak up on me or anything. So as you can see, it's just... and once this guy's done, it will start building. The Tech 2 bot. Now I would build Tech 1 um, radar, but as, as I've said in, in my building overview, it's got quite a small range. Like It's only just outside the vision range, so it can be very good if you are trying to make a fat fire base, just get up a Tech 1 very quickly, but even then I'd probably just assist on the Tech 2. 
yeah, I'm simply because it'd just be better. So you got a reason not to. So got some nice storage on the go. What's that tech two bot on building now? It is need. So I'm gonna take out this guy sim simply because I think that orange and green are gonna start going after each other first. And I think this guy's going to be the bigger threat to me, even though I think green is technically closer. But after I've taken out black, I can take out green very easily from behind, and then orange on the other side of the planet. So I don't have to worry about him so much. There you are. So come down here. I'm going to build this advanced radar on the far side of these mountains here. So if he does have any artillery, it's going to be very hard for him to actually pick it off. However... Um, this artillery has got a shorter range, it needs to arc higher to actually hit stuff, so if I put this behind here with the radar, it's likely to be able to hit it, but Tech 2 static artillery would have a lot of trouble because it would probably hit the side of this mountain. Which is another great feature of these randomly generated planets, you get to do these little sly tactics, these um, very area based tactics on the fly, because you don't know what the map is going to be before you start playing it, which is... Um, well, it's, it's really a first for a hardcore RTS like this. Um, I'm sure there have been RTSs that have done it in the past, but none, I don't think, as effectively as I've seen it done on this. And when you have the multiple planets, it's going to be such a strategic element to picking where to start, what planet to start on. Um, of course, if you start on like one of the, the first or the last planet, you're going to have in a more defensible position because you've got less surrounding you planet wise but middle planets might have higher resource de density and whatnot um, you probably want to pick one that's close to an asteroid belt lots and lots and lots of variety involved which is so cool to see we do, we do seem to be getting with a lot of games these days of trying to refine it trying to polish up as much as possible like um good example of this and don't don't get me wrong i love it but it's starcraft 2 it's it's a fantastic game fantastic game to watch as well you know esports wise however um it's a very static non-moving entity in that um when you have a map there are only going to be three or four things you will do on that map um which is great and everything again like you don't you don't want to play watch football where everyone's playing on different sizes and shaped pitches and kicking different shaped balls do you that would just be dull because it'd be down to pure luck however strategy games like this it's there is another layer of strategy involved in analyzing and working out the terrain let's try and do a bit of a sortie shall we i've got my tech 2 facility up let's hot key those guys and just do a little bit of a drive-by on this guy Looks like that's some static defense. <laughs> As you can see, the artillery shots are <laughs> they are very, very high. I think that this is likely to change quite quickly because this is just too high. It takes so long for the shot to drop off, you can just micro away from it very easily. And their mantra is trying to avoid as much micro as possible. And of course, you get so much overkill from the artillery like this. <laughs> it is very, very, very pretty though. That's... Now you turn on the mobile camera. Oh, oh, that was a very bad time to turn on the mobile camera. Okay. Right, let's, not... right, let's let's get some view on the battle. I'll show off Chrono Cam soon as well after this little sortie. Just push in a little. Boom. Then the artillery in the planes. Oh, it is as well. Ah. The planes just getting demolished by random artillery shots hitting them. That's one thing I love about um, this style of game. Okay, well, that's all my units dead. I think, though, that's a perfect opportunity to show off Chrono Cam. So, press this little thing in the bottom, you get a timeline which lets you rewind. Watch everything, you know, going backwards. You can jump back 10 seconds and then play in slow motion. How do you play in slow, slow motion? There's a way of playing in even slower motion than this. Um, 
page down. Oh, that's... Ah, uh, but this is this is slower than before, but it is incredibly cool technology. It allows you to do some pretty awesome stuff. You can see what you, what the battles are doing. You can see what happened in a place that you, that, that you weren't looking at at that particular time. Um, it, it, scouting with this will come in very handy. Um, as I've said previously, I don't like scouting with bots because you don't get any sort of static vision after you've done the attack however with chrono cam what you can do is click on the unit and say i want to see what happened when this unit died and you can see everything that it saw so it's kind of like it makes a lot of sense really from a battlefield perspective because as a commander with with the technology they've got with these robots you would record everything that happens and whatnot so I love it, it's brilliant, it works fantastic, it works very smoothly as well, and it works all direct off the server, so it's not even impacting the player at the front end's computer at all, which is, I suppose it probably will, on the very low end stuff, it might have some performance hit, but on general computers it's not going to have any trouble at all, which is pretty darn cool. I think, though, we shall go and kill Mr. Jacob. Jacob K243. We knew you. We knew these so well. I think I've got enough to be able to finish this attack now. So. As long as I don't just charge in blindly and actually try and skirt around the edges of my artillery a little. As you can see, I've got some tanks and some artillery. So we hotkey these guys. Uh, with artillery currently in the game, you do need artillery to counter it. You can't just counter it with basic other units. Oh, wow, he's got some Tech 2 vehicles up. But I've got more Tech 2 vehicles up. So, he's also got some static defense. It's going to help him a lot. Oh, wow, he's actually got quite, quite a few there. Run away! And I've got some vehicles. I haven't even got some vehicles up here. Let's move those down here for the time being in order to try and just in case he decides to push forward with that army but I think I have likely crippled him enough now to not have to worry about him too much right let's double click the artillery and double click the levers uh, leveler. there you are Get them all into the same place. <laughs> and let's get my artillery and st again to start to skirt the edges a bit. You can come here and build some more forward radar. You always want to have as far forward radar as possible, simply because you don't want them to ever be able to sneak up on you and take the corners and whatnot, take take the edges off you. This guy doesn't really seem to have much of a base. Uh, unless my radar is really covering as much as I'd hope. Hmm. There's no radar jamming in the game as yet. Um, I suspect that to come in um, a later patch, though. Such an integral part of Supreme Commander. No shields were as well, but I can understand their removal. Um, however, radar jamming and or stealth would go a long way, I think. Just for the level of strategy that they want in this game. Okay, oh, there's the commander. Kill the commander! The commander's attack does do an awful lot of damage because it's um, basically his D gun is his sound attack, but it doesn't matter as he is already dead. Good game, Mr. Jacob. Good game and a half for him. So, I'm going to position these guys forward. I'm going to re rally these factories to this side. I think. I think I am going to take out green first, but I think before we do that, I'm going to take this army and do a bit of damage to the back of orange. Um, and take my tech 2 bot and build some more forward radar up here. Oh, like I say, radar is incredibly important. I expect people to be building a lot more of it than they have in this game as it seems. 
Um, I am a little worried that this radar coverage doesn't go far enough, so before I push in, I'm going to stay here and wait for that Tech 2 radar to finish. Um, come down here, and we shall finish off this Tech 2 by here. So, all these factories are doing quite well. Actually, let's... No, I still can't afford it metal-wise. I was going to chuck that build capacity on those factories, but I can't afford it, unfortunately. Oh, all these guys going. You can come up here. Let's actually select the building, set the rally point down here or something. So as soon as this is finished, I'm going to be pushing in with these. Trying to do a little bit of damage. See what I can do to this guy. I don't again, I don't think green's gonna be much of a threat at this point. Have I got another so I have a tech two bot somewhere? Did I actually build one? There we go. Let's build some more radar close to the green to get a vision of there. There was a little bug in the last alpha patch where when you built a radar you immediately got the radar coverage, but that's been fixed, thankfully. Because it was a little, well, it's not a little cheesy, it was very cheesy. The question is, are these advanced or are these standard point defence? Because these are almost definitely point defence at this sort of range and arrangement. Oh, hello there. What are you guys? You are artillery. Oh no, D don't land artillery shells. Whatever you do. Oh, no. Oh. Problem with having a large force like this. Um, if they fire artillery, it's likely to hit something. <laughs> let's, just, again, let's just skirt around the edges. Try to avoid taking unneeded fire like that. Oh, there's his calm. Take it out. Now that's his commander down. Now the game doesn't end for that player until all the players have ended. So you can still build stuff, although we can't now win. Which is quite a cool little thing. It's kind of like a cross between the old Total Annihilation scenario and um, Annihilation which is quite nice it's a little different a little more interesting however I think that I'm going to be able to win this game I have destroyed Orange's commander Warauda and I don't think he's going to be able to build enough of an army to be able to counteract me and I've got good vision to be able to see if he does try to counterattack so for now Let's just push in and see if I can take out Queen. For all I know, he's got tons and tons and tons of tech to artillery just waiting to kill me. I don't know what his commander is either. Which is a, which is a very good reason to build some tech one air, air scouts, just to scout out what buildings are what. As Warad was just saying, point point commander in the water would have been a good idea. I agree with him. I'm just hoping that this guy hasn't done that. Oh wow, what's killing me? There's something there shooting me, but I'm not sure what. Oh, is there like something hidden there? Now, I would attack this building, but for some reason, um, there's no attack command on these buildings at the minute. On Tech 2 buildings, especially, so. What I'll do is I'll just hide some of these guys over here and just keep pushing in around here and try and find Mr. Blocky's commander. That's Rowder's boats on the shore. Where are you, commander? Artillery attacking the things, I think I've actually killed that factory, so I can come back over here and take out these units that were stuck inside this guy's factory. 
And now I've just got to try and find his commander. Oh, there it is. And GG. Well, I hope you found this um, okay. This is my first cast of a game. So I apologise if I wasn't very good at it. Um, please leave any comments below on how, how I can improve. They are greatly appreciated. And I will try and upload um, a Planetary Annihilation video as often as I can. Uh, thank you again for watching. I'm Surreal Lemming, signing out.